Silly Billy, I think the original idea came from a trip to Mexico, um, <coughs> organized by my Mexican publishers. And while I was there, somebody gave me some little worry dolls, a little box of worry dolls. And uh, I looked at them and they explained what worry dolls are for. If you tell your worries to the worry dolls, put them under your pillow, they'll do all the worrying for you. And the next day, you won't be worried. And I took these worry dolls home and gave them to my elderly mother, who was the biggest worrier I've ever met. And um, she was very pleased with them. And she phoned me up the next day and said, oh, I slept really well last night, Tony. And I said, that's great. And, and, and the next time I spoke to her, she, she was sleeping really well. And one day she phoned me up and said, I'm really worried. I'm really worried. And I said, why? What's the matter? She said, I've lost the worry dolls. <laughs> Um, and just a, a, a silly little story um, sparked something in my mind. The idea of worry does being to do with superstition and how, and how superstition is quite a strong influence, I think, on, on many people. And probably it was in, on, on me. And um, so that really got me thinking about a child who might also be given some worry dolls for his... Uh, worries and where that would lead. I didn't want it to be a book about magic worry dolls which take away all our worries. I certainly didn't want it to be about that at all. But I wanted it to be a book about, yes, anxiety, about um, superstition uh, and about maybe a suggestion of the fact that, the, the suggestion of the fact that there's a close connection between worrying and caring. Mm -hmm. uh, we think of worrying as being a, a negative uh, emotion, but in actual fact, it's very close to caring. My my mother, for instance, particularly, used to worry about my brother and I. That was what her biggest worries were. It weren't about us, and of course, Billy worries about himself to begin with. He worries about giant birds or shoes or hats flying around in his bedroom. Um, but he, co he he eventually works out how to cope with it by caring for the worry dolls. He worries about the worry dolls. Well, <clears throat> when when um Tony brought the dummy of this book into the office, which is the way he works. Um, it it wasn't it wasn't silly Billy, but it really struck a chord with me because I have a daughter who was terrified of lift doors closing or anything. I mean, very simple things. But anyway, um, I thought it was a wonderful, wonderful, powerful, important idea for a book. But it was called. Willy the Worrier. <laughs> <laughs> and it seemed to me, of course, that I haven't actually got Willy the Worrier dummy with me. But there he was. I, I knew Willy would be a worrier. After all, he worried about stepping on tiny insects every time he went for a walk. So he would be a worrier. And I wanted it to be about Willy when he was young. So I drew him with short trousers on. And it was exactly the same story, I think, as, as Silly Billy. But it was, it was, it was about Willy. And you weren't so sure about it being Willie. And, well, it was very interesting because I, I felt that Willie was already such an established character. Um, I'm sure you know Willie the Wimp, Willie the Champ, and the various other, four other Willie books. And it was almost as if Willie was going to overshadow this book. So we had a long chat about whether it should be a standalone picture book. And if so... I mean, Tony went away to think about it, and I said, if so, the character has to change. I was too nervous to ask him to make it a boy, because mm. I thought that would be too, um, sort of, like, suggest, yeah. too much uh, of a suggestion. So I suggested various crazy animals that it could be, and Tony went away thinking, this is useless, I'm fed up. Oh, I was so disappointed <laughs> in you, Denise. I thought, well, obviously it's Willie, of course there is. And, and yeah, and I got home and I started um, just drawing on the, the Willie the Warrior pictures. And as I, and as I drew, um, he turned into, into that, which is exactly the same drawing, but, um, but it's a little boy. Uh, but, and I call him Billy, of course, so we know that there's a connection with Willie. He's still got the same or very similar fair isle sweater on. He's got his hair parted in the middle and he's got big ears and he walks with a stoop. <laughs> so to me, he, he is, he is Willie, but... But it's not a Willy book, and I think it was a good it was a good decision to make it a boy, actually. Well, <clears throat> this is the kind of little dummy that um, Anthony brings in, um, and it's always a very very exciting moment when you have these meetings um, because they are it, inside each one is is a, a wonderful story, very very well thought out, and. Um, 
you could, I don't know if you can see, even the use of colour and black and white is, is, is thought Actually, through. Actually, in this one, yes, I was but using... This was a second dummy, wasn't it? Yes, yes, so, yeah, exactly. But um, you see this is black and white, and then we move on into little coloured pictures. And um, there are, we discuss things, um, but you can instantly see that this is going to be an incredible picture book. 